Hello, this is DJ and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a new masterclass tip for you. Okay, and the topic is um, how we can finish a big counter sinkhole with a smaller chamfer tool like this. You can see that in, and this is what I'm talking about. And about finishing a big chamfer surface with a smaller tool. I think I made one or two video on my channel and talk about this but this time is a little different you can see instead of uh, making constant depth of cut we are going to cut it with a spiral you can see that we have a spiral and with tape taper angle so it's a it's a com combination between a uh, a spiral movement with a, a, a taper angle so it's a little different with other video okay and this one is inspired by another video on YouTube I think from uh, what channel um NYC CNC and on 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 his video he do the same thing he um, machine a, a big cutter thing with a, a small chamfer tool and but the thing is um, he made this in uh, the the Fusion 360, uh, but I'm Mastercam guy, so I wonder if we can do the same thing on Mastercam. And the answer is yes, we can do that. I'm gonna show you right now with kind of tool that we are going to use. And bam, bam, you can see that, right? So this is the one I use the thread milling tool pad. Okay, why is the thread milling? Uh, I use the thread milling tool pad because um, it's different with the uh, 2D contour ramping. You can see here, I also have a contour ramping tool pad. Uh, um, it can only do a string ramping from top to the bottom. It's unable to do a, a, a ramping with taper angle. But with the thread milling tool pad, it's different. It's a specialized tool pad for cutting thread. And with the thread, we have strain thread and tapered thread. That's why it can do a, a taper ramping like this. So it's very suitable for the job, right? So that's why I, I chew this one. And you can see uh, with the thread milling tool pad, we can use uh, with it with uh, a flat enemy to do the rough the rough cut like this. Yeah, this is a flat end mill, and I can use this for roughing the material. And this is what it look like after the first tool pad. You you got some material left on on the countersink surface here, and after that we use the same tool pad but just uh, switch to another tool, and we can use a chamfering tool for for doing the finish. Yeah, like this, very nice, right? You can see we have a ramping tool pad from top to the bottom with uh, a taper angle, and of course the taper angle uh, in this case is uh, is either the countersink angle and is the uh, the angle of the tool. Okay. So uh, the quality of the surface is um, depend on. Uh, the precision of the tool and the step you use if you if you have a good tool you don't need to use a small step okay so we take a closer look on the tool pad and see how we use this we start with the the roughing tool pad first you can see uh, I'm gonna select a 6 millimeter flat 10 mil for the roughing cut and we go to the cut parameter <coughs> Uh, this is some important uh, information you need to take into account. The first thing is the, the pitch. That's is the step that we want to use for the ramping. So in this case, you can use a small value like 0 0.5, 0 0.3, depend on uh, how much material you want to leave on the part. Okay. So I'm gonna try with 0 0.5. The thread start angle you can leave it blank because it's not important in this case. And another another parameter is the allowance or overcut mm, this is uh, how you want to extend the cut yeah so uh, this is also very useful I'm gonna 
talk about it later in this video. Um, we can start with zero, and for the table angle, very important too. Uh, in this, we're gonna input the uh, the table angle of the countersink. So on this part, I have a 90 degree countersink. So this one should be uh, 45. Yeah. And of course, we have an internal thread. You can switch between uh, right hand and left hand here um, to change the the machining direction. Okay. And here is the tolerance of tool pad. We can uh, use a lot of value for for roughing. You can also do the multi passes, and uh, you can put some lead in and lead out for for the tool pad. I don't uh, want to go too deep about this. I just want to focus on the important parameter. Okay, we go to the linking parameter where we uh, define the start and the uh, and the end of the the cut. So I'm gonna try to cut from the top. It means zero from uh, this point. <laughs> oh, how to select this? Okay. <clears throat> I want to cut to this and uh, go deeper a little bit. So this one is uh, minus six, and I'm gonna go to minus six point two and do the calculation. Okay. Oh, I forgot to tell you one thing. That's when you select the uh, the entity for the thread milling. You can select uh, this this circle uh, this uh, this circle yeah the biggest circle the the countersink circle so when you select it it show the dimension of the the, the countersink you can see here uh, 18.8 a okay let's see what we have you can see the tool start from here i'm going to have a demonstration picture you can see so with the flat 10 mil, this corner point is the, the contact point and uh, it's also the calculating um, point. So you can see when the tool start at the Z0, we have this contact point. It's the first point contact with the surface. Okay, and it's keep going down with the step that we input. And it stop from here. Okay, it stop here. Yep. So after that roughing tool pad, this is what we got. A step is surface. Okay. If you take a closer look on here, you can see the flat uh, end mill is. <laughs> Uh, hit into the surface. We need to uh, move it up a little bit. Uh, we we move it up a little bit to make sure the, the finishing tool clean all the material. Okay. Uh, just uh, we go back to the tool pad. Uh, to lift some more material, you can uh, just move up the the start point of the thread like this for example I want to move it up 0 0.5 uh, sorry 0 0.2 and let's see what we got you can see uh, now the contact point is moved up and the tool is not uh, gonna hit the material uh, sorry it's not gonna hit the the countersink surface and then what we okay, what is it? so you can see uh, we move the tool up and we leave more material on the surface so it can make sure um, the finished tool can can clean all of this okay so how about if you want to start the tool from uh, a little bit higher Okay, and we st 
still want to keep the the contact point we just use this um this value okay I'm gonna turn this one on extend so so if you want the tone start from here right uh, a little higher at the top you can move up the start point first so maybe I want to go from one one millimeter higher than the part and go down but the thing is when we move the tool up we leave more a lot of material on the surface that's really bad it's not good for the finishing tool right so you need to compensate for that you you want the tool start from a higher position but still keep the um, little material so you need to use this one that's either allow an overcut that's that's some kind of, uh, uh, will ex extend the tool path so this one is calculated by on diameter not radius so keep in mind that this is uh, the offset diameter yeah so I'm gonna try to extend one millimeter uh, two two millimeter because it's the diameter I move the tool up one millimeter so I need to expand the diameter is two millimeter because this angle is 45 degree you can do some calculating okay and you understand uh, this value yeah you can see that when I use the allow and overcut I move the tool back to the contact position and this is what we got so we can we can make the tool start from a higher position but also keep the, the right contact point we don't leave too much material on the, the finished surface that's very good for doing this right just move up one zero point one to make sure yeah this flat I will not contact with the surface and we also leave not too much material material you can use a smaller step for reducing the stretch on the finishing tool and we can have a, a better surface finish so you can see this the uh, with a small step step down okay So just keep in mind with the flat end mill, this point is the calculating point of the software. Okay, and that's it for the roughing. And we move to the finishing. Um, uh, tip with tip diameter. Okay, so with the finishing, we have two different cases. Uh, you can see I have two different kind of chamfering tool. The first one here. This is a chamfering tool with uh, a flat uh, tip, and the second one is a flat. Uh, sorry, a chamfering tool with a point tip. That means the tip diameter is uh, almost zero. Okay. So the first case, um, we talk about the the chamfering tool without the tip. This one, yeah. So I gotta. Oh, sorry. I need to change the point. Okay, I change this to this one. Yeah, I cut from uh, 
the Z0 and so you can see it is the same with a flat and mill just imagine we have a flat and mill cover this chamfering tool and this is what we got so if we keep the same parameter 0 to uh, minus 6.2 and we keep it 0 you can see that the tool will not contact with the surface and we have a small cut like this you can see we have a distance between the the, the tool and the surface so we need to um, expand the tool pad so I, I, I believe with some simple calculation you can um, calculate and uh, find a value for this to move the tool out and contact with the part so I need to move this tip um, out uh, this uh, distance is half diameter of the tool this is a 6 millimeter tool so I need to move it out 3 millimeter but when I move it out 3 millimeter the diameter will be a 6 millimeter bigger so this is gonna be 6 yeah I repeat again this one is in diameter not uh, in uh, radius so you need to take into account this and check it again yeah you can see now we got uh, the correct contact point now the tool contact with the surface so this allowance over cut is uh, we can use this for expanding the tool path so to make sure we got uh, the correct contact point okay so for this case if we use a, a, a point chamfering tool with no tip diameter we need to expand a value is equal to the diameter of the tool yeah if the counter sink angle is 90 degree okay the easier case okay with different uh, angle you need to do some uh, calculating for finding this value okay in this case this will be the diameter of the tool six millimeter okay like this very simple right and next uh, we have another case that is uh, a chamfering tool with a tip diameter so this one is different yeah we st start with zero okay zero overcut and this is what we got it's also the same with the flat 10 mil this is the contact point um, not real right so the real contact point it should be here so the thing we need to do is move the tool now and we keep using using this one we check the tip diameter is the um, this is one millimeter so from here to here should be uh, 2.5 right 2.5 so that means the diameter should be five millimeter bigger okay <laughs> again this one is in diameter not in um, uh, radius so the diameter of the tool pad will be five millimeter bigger okay so by inputting a, a overcut we move the tool to the correct position okay now you can see we got a uh, correct contact point okay very simple so we got another option is called uh, linearized uh, yeah linearized helix so if you want uh, a, a program that just contain a linear move you can check on this and I try to post it you can see da, da, da.
yeah so when you pick on that uh, linearized helix you got a very long program with just uh, linear movement yeah very small linear movement and this depend on the the torrent value you you set here a smaller torrent will give a longer program so be careful on this if the control is too old um, you need to activate this but if you have a, a newer control control system you can just uh, uncheck this and let's see what's it different so this is a new program with uh, without the the linearized you can see that very soft program right we just have a um, circular move this is the uh, G G3 in FANUC, that's the circular move we just uh, need a, f a few line of code to to finish the cut compare with this very long program only with G1 G1 is the linearized uh, the linear move we need a lot of small move okay so if you have a new con control system you can use this one very effective and very smooth I try this okay mm, let me see anything else need to talk about this mm -hmm. yeah if you if you don't want to start right on the, the top of the park you want to um, move it move the tone up a little bit you can do the same thing like what we do with the, the flat ten mil we move this this point up maybe 0 0.2 so the tool start a little higher than the top of the stock yeah but when you move the tool up uh, you need to expand it so you move move, move up 0 0.2 the diameter should be uh, 0 0.4 bigger to move the tool back to the correct position yeah like this uh, yeah see that Yes, yeah, so take into account on this uh, number, very important. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, so very easy, right? Uh, let's do some simulation. Okay, eh, 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 we can we're gonna do a uh, verifying. Okay, so. This is the, the facing operation. I'm gonna turn off the workpiece and do some uh, drilling for the clearing hole. And you can see that after that, uh, this is the flat 10 mil we use for doing the roughing cut. yeah and this is step surface after the roughing after that I come with a chamfering tool a flat tip chamfering tool go from the top to the bottom go like this you can see uh, we still have a lot of material here uh, we can affect the, the surface finish so you need to try on your machine to, to see what value is the best okay it's a, it's quite a very last step now if you if you have a good tool you can go very last step now and can you can keep a good surface um. <clears throat> yeah very nice and we also have another option to do this is so you don't need to do any calculation that's using a 3d tool pad and there's one tool pad that you can use is the mm -hmm, the flow line. <laughs> if you want to do a a spiral a, a spiral movement, you can use this flow line with like a surface. And just need to um, select the right cutting direction. Uh, and 
e e e and when you go here you select um, spiral and then put a step for the cut Oh, sorry, wrong plan selected. <laughs> Should be top. Uh, okay. So this is another way you can do that. Just using a a 3D flow light tool pad, you can also create a spiral movement like this from top to the bottom. But the thing is, this is a 3D tool pad. You uh. Uh, it won't allow you to uh, to post the code with just a uh, circular movement. You need to uh, post it using um, linearized move. So the program is gonna be long if you're using uh, this flow like tool pad. And another thing is, uh, if you want to extend the start point and the end point of the tool pad, you need to uh, modify this surface. So it's not so good to to modify the part if you had a lot of hole. Um, this is gonna take time. Okay, I just want to show you another option. If you don't want to use a treadmilling tool pad, you can try the flow line. But I, I recommend using this treadmilling because um, it's allow us to uh, post a program that's uh, uh, using a circular move like this, you can see this is a 3D um, a taper cylinder. Yeah, taper helix. You can see X. We have X, Y, and Z spiral. Very nice, right? And very quick. When you put it on a machine, it's gonna run very smooth. Okay. And uh, come after that, I uh, just showing you some uh, test cut um, I I do on my uh, my friend's shop, and you can see uh, how nice is the surface. <laughs> Okay, and that's all for today. Uh, I hope I, uh, this video is uh, useful for you and uh, you can use it someday in the future. Okay, and uh, again, thank you for watching and goodbye for now. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.